for such a privileged day as today, opportunity where we stand in your presence to exalt and to honor you because of whom you are. Holy Spirit, without you, the true church does not exist. We ask that your presence be noticed in this message, that you put your word in our mouths. Let us not be seen, nor heard, but declare your presence. Have many that will come to your presence expecting to receive from you. May they never be disappointed in Jesus' name. Father, make your word real in my mouth. Confirm every word that proceeds from my mouth with signs following it. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brethren, today you are welcome to this Open House Fellowship. Today is Saturday, where we gather together to train the trainers. In today's topic of training the trainers, we have quite a lot on our hands. Today we are looking at a topic that says the need of intercessor. Why do we as believers need intercessor? What will happen if there is no intercessor in our lives, in the life of the ministry, or in the world? Without intercessor, how does people feel? So today we are going to be taking a hint at the topic why we need intercessor, the need of intercessor. Before we go further into it, we must understand that without intercessor, the world is void of truth, and darkness covers the surface of the earth, and it covers the people with gross darkness. It takes intercessors to defend the rights of the weak and those who cannot help themselves. To receive help from the Lord. And sometimes, when we understand that our path has slipped from the path, it brings fear upon us. Because the Bible says, What they bring upon a man on the days of initiation, put fear upon him. It makes him afraid to live his own life. And because of that, we need intercessor to intercede on our behalf, even when we have no hope. When all our hope are taken out of the way, it is by the help of an intercessor that we can come back strong and trust in God for divine help. So today, we are going to be taking a hint at the scriptures for the book of Isaiah chapter 59 from verse 1. Let's look at a life without intercessor, how it affects our lives, and how negatively it impacts our direction which we take in life when we do not have anyone to intercede for us, when we do not have anybody to plead our cause, either before the earthly king or before the heavenly one. Because even before the earthly king, we need a man that will go for us, that will stand in the gap and plead on our behalf to present our case before the king. But before the heavenly king also, we need him who will go on our behalf and, and intercede on our behalf and say, this is my son or this is my servant. I have come to plead on his behalf. This is the reason why he should not face so and so punishment. This is the reason why he should be spared of such contradiction. And that is the reason why as a believer, every one of us needs somebody to intercede on our behalf. So, now let's read from the book of Isaiah chapter 59 from verse 1. What does it say? Behold, the Lord hand is not shortened, that it cannot what? Save. Neither is his ear heavy, that he cannot hear us. That is the first point we must need to understand as believer. 
sometimes we think because we pray, our prayer seems not to be answered. It's because God has neglected us. The Bible is making it clear to us here that the hands of the Lord are not shortened that he cannot save. Neither are his ear dull that he cannot hear our prayers. But something else kept us away from our God. That is one of the major reasons why we need somebody to intercede on our behalf. Because in another place, before we go further, let us understand what verse 2 says. What did verse 2 says in this verse? It says, But that iniquity have created a barrier between you and God. Your iniquity has separated, created separation between you and your God. And your sin has hid his face from you that he would not hear. It's not that God will not listen to our prayer or it's because he's so hard-hearted that when we call, he just refused to listen. That is not the personality of the God I know. But the something else is the reason why it seems your prayer are not answered. And when you pray, it's like you are wasting your time. It's not because God's hands are shortened that he cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear your prayer. But something else is holding you back. Iniquity. Iniquity. And the Bible says that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. Though he cry, the Lord will not listen. And that is the reason why your sins, your ways are blocked. It's not because God hates you. No, God never block your way because out of hatred. Your ways are blocked because of your sin. Because your iniquity has created demarcation between you and your God. Between your requests and his desire for your life. And until that gap is filled, you may never get to hear from him. And that is the reason why today you need somebody to bridge the gap between you and your God, between your request and his request, between your solution and his solution, between your desire and his desire. And that's exactly what you need. Because the hands of God are not short, that he does not just want to hear you. Neither has his ear deaf, that he decide that I will not listen to your prayer. But your iniquity is the reason why. Now, how do we deal with this area when iniquity stops us from assessing the presence of God? Let's get to that point. How do we deal with the area when iniquity is separating us from assessing the God we know? Verse 3 says, because of sins, our hands are defiled with blood. Our fingers are stains with iniquity. Our lips spoke lies. And our tongues have mortal preservedness. These are the reasons why God will not hear us. Why verse 4, he said, none of us even though when we have the privilege, call for justice in the earth. Nor any plead for truth. Rather, they put their trust in vanity. And they speak lies with their neighbors. They deceive mischiefs. And bring forth what? Iniquity. And this is the reason why your prayers remain hidden. That despite all the long nights, fasting, prayer, devotion, nothing seems to be happening. It's not because God refused to hear you, but your prayers are hidden. Your sins has covered you, that God cannot hear you. And the Bible says in verse 5, that they hash the cockroach eggs. And they are, and with the spider's web, he that eateth of their egg dies. 
because your your fruits cannot produce food for people anybody that try to copy your fruits or eat it something else happen he dies and he that try to copy your ways goes astray and that which is crushed breaketh out into viper and you're supposed to bruise the head of the serpent you have now become one of his seed and their, your web cannot make garment for covering for people even when you try to do your religious service your religious service is just a social ceremony it cannot be a cover for the people when people try to come under you for covering all the gods is like a spider covering it cannot become a clothes where they can clothe themselves and something else happened neither shall they cover themselves with your works your works are so dirty that nobody can cover himself with it and your works are works of iniquity the art of violence are in your hands and as a result you cannot approach before the lord because it's the light that shines in darkness darkness cannot stand before it and the reason that is the reason why though you want to come close though you take delight in approaching unto god god keep withdrawing from you in verse 7 he said to us that your feet runs towards evil and you make haste to shed innocent blood oh you value your dignity more than the shedding of innocent blood you don't want people to you don't want to feel ashamed so the quickest option is to shed innocent blood and your thoughts are thought of evil iniquity and you wasting and destructions are in the pathway you choose the ways of peace you do not even know though you claim you clamor for peace but you don't know the way of peace you think the only way to achieve peace is to subdue your enemy when i kill all my enemy i will have peace but that is not solution because out of the roots of the serpent the viper gets his things when you kill one 200 will arise when you kill 200 5 million will arise and they will torment you day and night because you suffer for peace you will get trouble you suffer for solution you will get confusion because they will not come because the only way to true peace is to invite the prince of peace it's not by killing your enemies it's not by making war with those who are at peace with you that is not the way to peace but you think peace is when you subject people to become slaves under you the more slave you have the more trouble you have and now you suffer peace you cannot get it and there is no judgment in your ways and behold you made your path crook whosoever go there in shall not know peace it's not only you are void of peace anybody that come close to you is also void of peace you don't give peace because you have become like the wicked because when the wicked rule the people suffer whether you are righteous or good and that is what you have become because you have created the path for yourself where anybody that come to you is also void of peace and there is no judgment in your going because all you do is to try to escape as if the lord will not see it there will be no judgment for me as long as i cover my sin and you forgot what the bible say he that covereth his sin will not prosper and as a result prosperity is far from you and you are afraid of the path that you have chosen because you don't know where it leads and they have made their path crook whosoever go in will not know peace there is no judgment from that is the reason why judgment is far from you 
and let that dodge justice overtake you. You wait for light, behold, darkness show up. And for brightness, you walk still in darkness. And you are wondering, when will light ever comes into your life? When will solution comes to your problem? When will your difficulties be rolled away? The reason is because while you keep seeking for light, you keep bringing darkness upon yourself. Not because the hands of the Lord are shut in, or because his ears are dull in hearing. The reason is because of you. Because you have made iniquity your path. You have chosen iniquity over righteousness. Because you hate righteousness, you hate devotion to the Lord, iniquity has sold for you an obscured garment. But the Lord is saying today, if you can love, inic love righteousness and hate iniquity, the Lord your God will anoint you with the oil of gladness, even above your fellow. But all it takes to get to that level is to hate iniquity, to love righteousness. But that you do not know. Therefore, judgment is far from you. You wait for light, behold, darkness show up. Brightness, but thick darkness. You grow for the wall like the blind. And you grow as if you have no eyes. You stumble at no day. And the reason is because, it's not because of your enemy. The reason is because your sins has darkened your eyes. Your foolishness has darkened your parts. And you are running about in the midst of darkness in the daylight. As if you are already in the night. You are desolate in your places, even as dead men. You think you are alive, but you are already dead. Because the wages of sin is dead. You roar like a bear and mourn and sow like a dove. You look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from you. Why? You ask yourself. Why is the Lord so wicked? Why has the eyes of the Lord turned away from me? That's why day and night I sought to see his face. I fast three times a week. I go to the mountains. I went into his house. I seek for his presence. But why is God not just found? Why is the eyes of the Lord turned away from me? That's part of my devotion. But have you ever looked at the errors in your ways? Have you ever checked to know the path you have chosen? Have you ever searched your heart? What does the scripture, Bible said? It says, search the scripture. In day you think you have life. Christ said, they testify of me. Have you ever bothered to search the scriptures? Oh. He that has the bridegroom. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. Do you have the bride? Does your way have the Lord Jesus Christ in it? Does your thinking have God in it? You take delight in approaching to God. Let's view your life. Are you just going being religious or are you actually Christ-like? Do you know where the name Christianity come from? Do you know it was given because the people, they behave like Christ? Check your life. Do all that see Jesus in you? While you are going through this world of sin and your life, people are reading it like a book. Can they boldly look at you and say your life point them to the sky? Or does your life point them to the depths in hell? Does your life, can you tell yourself with boldness that if anybody follow your footsteps, it will lead him to an eternal life? Can you, like Paul, boldly say, follow me as I follow Christ? Or you want people to follow your teaching, not you? God is asking you. The judgment days are bare before you. 
Instead of looking for who to blame, search for the errors in your way. Search for the paths where you have erred. But sometimes your eyes are so blind. Affliction have darkened your eyes. You cannot just seize the errors in your ways. All you behold is the Lord hate you. It's because God is so angry with me. For no reason, like Job, you said to yourself, my righteousness is better than that of God. That's why God has turned his back on me. <laughs> Shall the judge of the whole earth do evil? Shall the righteous father turn his back upon the right? Does he not favor the righteous? Does he turn his back on his people forever? Has not your sins created demarcation between you and your God? Has not your foolishness Put a boundary between you and him that he does not listen when you called. And the Bible is saying to you today in verse 12 that because of your transgressions, your transgressions are multiplied here off before the Lord and your sin testifies against you. Whenever you want to do what is right, when it is God has acknowledged the fact that you pray every day, day and night you approach to Him in prayer, you are devoted in naming down. But the Lord is asking you, why does your transgression quick keep multiplying? And whenever you kneel in prayer, your sin testifies against you. Because we have advocates. An advocate needs something to work with. We have Christ the righteous. He is our advocate before the Father. When you have a bad case, it is difficult for any lawyer to prove. Oh, you killed somebody yesterday and the lawyer is in the court. In the process of defending you, you are killing another one. How would the lawyer be able to defend you? And the Lord is asking you, I want to defend you. I want to prove to the world that you are different. You are children that will not lie. But now that I'm in the process of doing so, you are on top of the lost bed of adultery. You are upon another sin. You are seeking for who? To take his possession by force. You are seeking to shed an innocent blood. How can I defend you? And that is exactly the problem. And God is asking you here today, because your transgressions has multiplied before him and your sins testifies against you whenever he tried to defend you and for your transgressors are with you and your iniquities they they attach themselves to you you know what they are and god is telling you you know what they are why don't do away with them the transgressions, in transgressing and lying against the Lord, you departed away from your God. Because even when you go on your knees, you open your mouth to lie before God. To tell God, I set my hand, I'm a righteous. And when you know fully well that your hand has swelled with blood and sins has covered your face. And the Lord is saying to you today, even when you come before me, should you lie? Shouldn't you have spoken the truth? But you, in departing from the Lord your God, you speak oppression and revolt against your neighbor. You conceive, you are conceiving and uttering from their hearts words you know they are false. All in the name of prophecy. And therefore, judgment is torn away backward. And the reason for all this evil is not because God hates you. God has turned his light upon your secret sin. No. It's because your sins has grown so large that it can no longer be ignored. Your foolishness has brought you to the light. Because you have done that which is evil in the sight of the Lord. And you have turned away from your God. And as a result, your blessing can't just come. 
And God is saying to you, today things can still be better. You can change for that which is right. Your falsehood can be taken out. In verse 14, your judgment is turned backward and justice started afar off. For truth is falling in the streets. Iniquity cannot even enter your streets. But today, the Lord is speaking to the sons of God. He stands in the council of the mighty and he prophesies among God. And he says, O ye sons of men, do you actually know you are gods? Or do you want to die like men? Do you want to fall like one of the princes of the world? Why not arise and do wisely? Help the oppressed, free the widows and the orphans. Let the eyes of the poor man within your streets not be allowed to fall. Care for the needy. Do good and no evil. And the Lord will come into and they will have dealing with you once again. And his presence will be felt in your life. But they will not listen. Neither will they understand. They go on in darkness still. They grow for the war in no days. There they are in great terror where no terror is. I'm not the worker of the iniquity who eat up the people of the Lord as they eat bread. And they do not call upon the name of the Lord. But God is asking you one simple thing here. The Lord saw it, and all this doing of your hands displeased him. And there is no judgment within you. He saw that there was no man. He wondered why nobody is even interceding on your behalf. The church that's supposed to pray on your behalf is busy seeking for other things. The people who you hope upon and whom you give your tithes and offering, you expect them to go on their knees on your behalf and to, have, to plead with the Lord and say, Oh Lord, spare my people. The Bible says, even though I shut the heaven, that it does not rain, and I close the sky, that it does not bear fruits, and the rain above your head become powder. He said, if the people that are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, and they will pray, I will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. God is saying to you, your land can still be healed, but you just need the people that are called by his name to humble themselves in prayer on your behalf. And cry out day and night before the Lord. Drew water in the street and say, O oh Lord, spear thy people. O oh Lord, spear thy people. That is all he wants to hear. If not keep looking for man to recount your righteousness before him, he just wants the people who are called by his name to humble themselves in prayer and in intercession on your behalf. Now you see why you need intercession. Why you need somebody to stand in the gap for you? Because there are lots of people who are in the lower room feasting, celebrating. But God needs people that will actually go to the upper room, agonizing in prayer, seeking for the face of the Lord, throw water in the street, and say, Oh Lord my God, spear the land, spear my brother, spear my sister, spear my daughter, spear my son. God is looking for those people who would dare to pray. Because if there is a man to pray, there is a God in heaven to listen. God is looking for intercessor. God is looking for intercessor that will not lie. Intercessor that will seek him earnestly. Intercessor that will not stain their hands. That love judgment. That understand equity. That know that will not cover their sins. But rather we confess it and forsake it. God is looking for intercessor in the church. God is looking for intercessor in family. God is looking for intercessor in the world. God is looking for intercessor in your streets. God is looking for intercessor in your business, in your day-to-day -day activity. 
God is looking for people that will intercede on their behalf. We need intercessors. But God is saying to you today, hmm, behold, he wonder why there is no one to intercede on your behalf. And that's why the Holy Spirit stepped in most of the time. Because when we don't know how to pray, as we're supposed to pray, the Spirit himself help our infirmities. We go on it that cannot be altered. When the Spirit go on, he testifies that we are his children. We are the children of God. Children that will not lie. When we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself have a testimony that this is a child of God. If we live according to the covenant of promise, but God is looking unto us today and is asking, why is there no intercessor? Why is nobody taking up this case of my children in heaven? Why is there no man is bold enough to come to the throne of grace to ask God for help in time of need? Why are my people who are supposed to live as kings suffering in the earth? Why are the royal prince become his slaves? Why have those who are a choosing generation become servants? Why are those who are a peculiar people attach themselves to the things that does not profit? But God is saying to you, things can still change. Your situation can be better today. God can give you a hope, even where there is no hope. And he's saying to you, because he discovered no intercessor was coming. Nobody think about his people. Nobody tried to seek his face. Nobody tried to present the case of these people to him. Therefore, the Lord himself said, I will intercede on your behalf. I will intercede on your behalf. I will cry out on your behalf. The Lord said, therefore, his hand brought him salvation unto him. He will and true salvation in the life of his children. He will not turn his back, say, because the world has neglected you, because the church has turned their back, or because intercessors in the church are busy praying for their financial empowerment rather than praying for God to uplift his people, rather than praying for God to deliver his sons. God will do it himself. He said, I will intercede on your behalf. I will pray for you. Oh, therefore, the hands of the Lord brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness sustained him. God is not going to look, save you because of your righteousness, not because of your good which you have done. He's going to look upon the righteousness of his son that was sacrificed on a wooden cross 2,000 years ago, and he's going to save you for his sake. And that's why by grace you are saved. That is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. It is not of work. Let any man on earth have the power to boast. God will do it for himself. Since no man will intercede, he will intercede on your behalf. He will pray on your behalf. He will cry out on your behalf. And his voice shall be heard. Oh, the earth will fetch his presence. Because the Lord is going to save his people. The Lord is going to deliver his church. The Lord is going to protect his children. And he said, for he put on righteousness. The Lord is going to put on the garment of righteousness. He's going to put it on for your sake. And as the breastplate. And he's going to take salvation as a habit upon his head. The garment you lack, he is going to take it. He is going to put it on you and he's going to crown you with the helmet of salvation and upon his head. And he's going to put on the garment of vengeance for his clothing. And he's going to take vengeance upon those who have taken delight in corrupting his children, who has taken delight in propelling you towards iniquity so that they can destroy the work of your hands, so that they can pull you down, so that they can turn you away from your God so that they can celebrate your defeated wounds. But God is looking at you and he said today, enough is enough. Enough is enough for the devil. Enough is enough for the workers of iniquity who take delight in pushing my people away from me, who take delight in destroying the works of their hands, who take delight in turning them from the Lord so that they can afflict them. 
But God is saying today, enough is enough for the workers of iniquity. Whose job is it to destroy the works of the hands of my people? Whose job is it to pull down those who trust in the Lord? Oh, God is saying today, enough is enough for the workers of iniquity who eat up his people as they eat bread. But God will intercede on their behalf because he's going to put vengeance on as a garment. And he's going to clad his cloak with zeal. And he's going to fight and defend his people. And the Lord says in verse 18, According to the deeds which they have done to you, even so according to the will will I repay. Fury! Hmm, fury unto his adversary and recompense to his enemies. To the island he will recompense the Lord. So shall they fear the name of the Lord your God from west and his glory from the rising of the sun. The Lord himself is going to do the fight. And the only reason why he's going to do that fight is if you keep trusting him. He saw that you are helpless against this evil. He saw that you are helpless because of your sin, which has been continually before him. Oh, his death of his son has not changed your life at all. But God is saying today, if you keep coming to me, what does the Bible say in the book of Matthew chapter 5? He said, blessed are those who hunger and taste for righteousness, for they shall be fed. The Lord, if you keep tasting for righteous living, if you keep hungering for it, you will be fed with it. God is going to feed you with it. He's going to cross you with a garment of righteousness. And he's going to empower you with zeal. The Lord himself will do this in his time. Because nobody can actually come to him and set him himself, draw the person to himself. God is going, is in the business of drawing people. God is in the business of drawing the church. He's in the business of drawing men and women and children unto his name. God is still in that business and he's ready to draw that man, that woman that with dear approach to him with a sincere heart. God is saying today, if you can only dear approach, he will draw you to himself. He will draw your wife, he will draw your children, he will draw them all to himself. And he says, all that the Father, Jesus himself said, all that the Father gives to me will come to me. And anyone that comes to me, I will by no means chase away. God is not going to chase you away. He is in the business of drawing people. He is in the business of saving lives. He says, despite you have eaten the cockroach egg, despite today you has made the vipers garment, Despite you have made yourself the spider web, that anybody that eats of your egg dies, even your fruit, they dies. But God is saying today, even though the garment that clothes you is the garment that cannot make a clothing for any man, but God is saying today, He's ready to take all that away. He's going to replace it with righteousness. He's going to replace it with holiness. And He's going to purify you. He's going to sanctify you and make you a vessel of honor to Himself. But God is saying to you, but there's only one thing. Just approach to him. Let us intercede. Let us intercede. We need somebody to stand in the gap. Who will go for us? Who shall we send? And the Lord is asking the question. Who will go for us? Who shall we send? Who will ascend before the Lord? Who is he that is able to go to the hills of the Lord with a clean hand and a pure heart? He does. Let's go to the book of Psalm. Let's see Psalm 24. And let's see what God has in store for us in Psalm 24. Oh, the Lord is saying to us that the earth belongs to the Lord and everything in it. In verse 1. And he said, The world and they that were therein, he founded it upon the sea. And behold, he established it upon the flood. Who is that man invested in? Who shall ascend to the hills of the Lord? Who is able to go before the Lord to present our request before the Lord? The Bible says, Who shall stand in the holy place of the Lord? Who is able to stand and intercede on behalf of his people? For you to be able to fill the gap of an intercessor. In verse 4, he said, You must have a clean hand. You must have a clean hands and a pure heart. That is the man that qualifies. The man whose hands are not defiled with blood. Whose heart is 
steal, does not take a revenge against his neighbor, and does not look with vengeance upon his enemies. That is the man that can sense to the hills of the Lord. That is the man that has a clean hands, and the man that has a pure heart, who stands in the holy place before the Lord. And the Lord is saying, that man will have a clean hand and a pure heart. And he's not lifting his soul towards the vanities of the world. Nor is he swearing deceitfully. Nor does he swore deceitfully. In verse 5, he says, that man is the man that qualified to receive blessing on behalf of the people of God. Is the man that qualified to intercede on behalf of his brother. Is the man that qualified to take the, like the high prince to bring the sacrifice of the people before the Lord his God. That is the man that can sense to the heels of the Lord with a clean hands and a pure heart. That is the man that will present the people request before the Lord. That is the man that will request for the garment of righteousness for those who are clothed with sin. That is the man that can come before the Lord with a clean heart, with a pure heart. Oh, we have our Passover. Thank God, God has already found such a man. That is the man Christ Jesus. And that man, he is our Passover. He was killed for us. So that we do not need to face death by ourselves. That was the man that qualified to bring our righteousness before the Lord. All we need to do is to bring him into our lives. Oh yes, he is our advocate. He is the intercessor we need. We need him to intercede for us. Because he says when we don't even know how to pray for what we need as we're supposed to. He has sent the spirit of the son which cry Abba Father. And that spirit, whenever he cry Abba Father, he testify, these are the children of God. And if we are children, therefore we are joined here, we cry. Therefore we are seated together in him, in heavenly places, far above the occult wickedness of the world, far above spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, far above the rulers of the gods of this world. God is saying to you, you can be different. You can be different. You can come to his presence. You can have a pure heart. You can have a clean heart. The Lord says, I will remove the heart of stone from you. And a new heart will I put within you. I will remove that heart of stone. And I give you a heart that is flesh. A heart of flesh. A heart that will submit to his will. A heart that will humble himself before the Lord. God says, I can change you. What does he say? He said he made one. But the residue of the spirit from where one was made, he has it. Why therefore did he make one? So that he can preserve a godly seed. So that it can preserve a godly seed. God is interested in preserving you as a godly seed to himself. He doesn't just want you as a son, but he wants you to be a godly son. And he's saying to you, if you have that ability to come, to intercede on behalf of your brother, and does not hide yourself from your own flesh, but God is saying today, you will receive blessing. You will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of your salvation. He has the ability to give it. And in verse 6, he say, these are the generation of the people that God is looking for. These are the generation of intercessors that seek the face of the God of Jacob. Will you boldly come? Oh, God is saying, let's go to Isaiah 60 from verse 1. What does he say? If you have come to this fullness and there is intercessor who will arise on behalf of the people, God is saying to you, therefore arise and shine because your light is come. Arise and shine because your light is come. Because you already have one intercessor. Oh yes, you already have one intercessor because the Lord your God has risen. Oh, he has risen on your behalf. He said, arise and shine, because your light is come. And he said, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And that you know who the glory of the Lord in your life is. That is the personality of Christ Jesus. He has risen. He has risen. 
and because he has risen in your life oh he has brought light into your life he has brought light into your life because he is the light that shines in darkness and darkness cannot do anything about it and he is saying behold darkness may cover the earth darkness may cover the earth and grass darkness the people that live in it but the lord god shall arise oh he shall arise do you know why because he christ has been interceding from you for the past 2000 years since he left the earth he has never stopped one day to intercede for you he has kept praying for you the prayer he started on the garden in gasamana he is still praying it for you till tomorrow he is still saying father i pray for my own that are in the world oh father i pray for not this ones alone father i am praying for their sins i am praying that you should preserve them from the world he is praying for you because he is your light because he is your life because he is your blessing he is your morning star he is the only source of your joy and he keep praying for you he is praying for you tonight he is will be, keep praying for you tomorrow he will pray for you throughout this year every day you wake up the holy spirit is interceding on your behalf and that is why you can boldly arise and go boldly to the throne of grace and ask God for help in time of need. Despite all your shortcomings. Despite all your weaknesses. Despite all your sin. Despite all your limitations. God says you can arise. You can still shine. Your light can still shine forth. You can shine like the sun. God is saying to you. Because my son has taken your iniquity. Whenever I look at you. I don't see your sin. I see Christ in you. Because Christ in your life is the hope of your glory. And that's why tonight you can rise, you can arise, you can shine forth, and behold, darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord your God shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon your life. In verse 3, he says, People will be because of the light of God that will revive. After Christ intercedes on your behalf, people will come to your light. The reason why people come to Christ from everywhere was because of that light. People can still come to you from everywhere around the world. You don't need to show naked pictures on Facebook. You don't need Twitter. You don't need YouTube. All you need is the glory of the Lord upon your life. When the Lord arrives with you, ha, darkness will vanish away. He will draw all men to himself. Because he said the city set upon the heat cannot be hidden. You cannot light light and put it under a brush dryer. Right that he stands on his stand that he can give light to everybody in the life, in the house. When your light arrives, people will see it. And those that see it will tell their neighbor. What does the Samaritan woman do? When he saw the light, he ran to his people. And he said, come and see the man that told me all that I ever did. People will go on your behalf. Influencer will rise because of you. When your light shines, people cannot hide it. The enemy cannot cover it. The wicked cannot cover your light. Because your light will shine and radiate above the wicked. And that is what God is telling me to tell you tonight. This is where we're going to end. Bedroom, we want you to join us tomorrow again. In, during the Open House Fellowship, we start by 5 p.m. God bless you as you take part. Our information at in the link of this video take your time to study it god bless you as we see tomorrow by 5 pm in jesus let us pray father we thank you once again we exhort and honor you because of your people that have come to the light lord let your light shine in their life let the lights that come through christ radiate in everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice father lord we give you all the glory we give you all the let your name be Lord be exalted.